Hi everybody, it's Kathy and welcome to Gina's Friday Features uh, video. What we're going to do is we're going to try to do some videos for you guys that we'll post every Friday and it will involve different sewing techniques and different presser feet and tools that we use along the way. So today I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to put in an invisible zipper with Bernina's number 35 uh, invisible zipper foot. Now invisible zippers are one of the prettiest zippers I think uh, that you can uh, use in your projects. They're not only for garments, but you can use them in your home deck projects as well, or pillows, or, or, or some purses, not all of them. But uh, I like them because they're not really visible to the eye. And they're not really that hard to put in. So I thought I would share with you just a few of the things that I do uh, along that I've learned to do I should say along the way uh, that has helped me uh, with doing the uh, construction on items that have an invisible zipper so one of the things I do to prepare my fabric is to support that zipper because you know uh, the zipper tape and the coils themselves are a little stiff and sometimes they can make your fabric ripple where they've been um, inserted so I usually will take a fusible garment weight interfacing and fuse just a strip as wide as the seam allowance and I uh, fuse that down on the wrong side of the seam allowance of the garment so the zipper will be stitched through that and it just kind of supports that zipper and prevents your fabric from reacting to the stiffness of the zipper uh, the other thing I do to prepare and oh well, I guess I should tell you I took one of the needles out of my serger I took the needle on the left out of my serger which only left one needle in and that gave me a very tiny narrow three thread overlock and I did that just to secure the fabric to where it wouldn't fray. Uh, if you don't have a serger you could use one of the stitches uh, on your machine that are overlock type stitches or fabric finishing stitches. And um, on my zipper I generally take it out of the package and you know they're all folded up and crimped so I press it. But I also will take a medium heat iron and press the coils of the zipper away from the tape to kind of flatten them because generally they're rolled over pretty tight. And so I press them over and try to flatten them a little bit and that just makes it a little bit easier during the construction for you to be able to get that stitching line close to the coils of the zipper. I always buy a zipper longer than what is recommended by the pattern and when we insert this zipper I mark the pattern uh, lines of course for where the opening should end but when we insert the zipper you'll have more zipper than you need and after we get it all inserted and the seam finished we can remove the excess of that zipper okay so one thing that always happened to me was that I would get my fabric pieces twisted. So I started marking them. So we're looking at the right side of the fabric and I had the left garment piece and the right garment piece. And I put an L for the left garment piece and an R for the right and I put it where the seam allowance is going to be for my zipper so that I could see it very easily. On my zipper I did the same thing. You locate the right side of the zipper and of course that would be the side that when it's closed your little zipper pull will be dangling and on the right side of the zipper I marked L and R. So that way when I get ready to insert my zipper and I have to position it right sides together I can make sure that I'm putting the correct side of the zipper to the correct garment piece because I always got them twisted. So the presser foot that we're going to use is presser foot number 35 and as you can see or I hope you can see let me get my little marker here uh, there are two ditches, one on each side of the center of the presser foot. We are going to use the left ditch of the zipper foot for the left side of our garment and we're going to use the right ditch to the center of the presser foot 
for our right garment piece. So that'll kind of make it easy for you to remember that as well. The zipper foot itself does not have a slit in it for you to slide your thread through. So we're going to be very careful and, and guide our needle down the opening of the zipper foot where the needle normally travels when you're sewing. We want to be careful, make sure we don't bump the tip and dull our needle. So we're going to gently glide the presser foot up the needle reach under the presser foot into the back of the needle and pull our needle thread to the bottom. I'm going to go into my machine and tell it that I have my number 35 presser foot on. And select my straight stitch. And I'll probably just use it at the average 2.5 uh, stitch length setting. This is a piece of wool, so uh, that'll probably be a, a good stitch length setting for that. So we're going to have to position our zipper right sides together with our piece. So I've got the left side of my zipper that I've marked with an L, and the left garment pattern piece that I've also marked, and I'm going to flip my zipper right sides together with the fabric. Uh, one thing that you can also do if you if you would like to is you could mark your 5 8 inch seam allowance on the fabric. I kind of eyeball it and but if you've got to be really precise to make like for a garment or something to make it uh, work out perfectly for you you can either run a stitching line down this piece that's five eighths of an inch from the edge so you can position that coil on it but I kind of took a ruler ahead of time and I measured from the edge to where uh, my line would be and realized that my zipper tape positioned against the side of my serging was perfect, was going to give me a perfect 5 8 inch seam allowance in the back. Uh, I am going to put the coil of the zipper in the ditch on the left of center because we're working on the left garment piece and zipper and hold my threads when I start to sew and we're just going to attach it. It's going to be very easy. If you feel more comfortable pinning your zipper in place, by all means do so. I'm just going to hold it because I've stabilized the fabric. It shouldn't stretch with that interfacing. And that is how easy it is to put the zipper with the foot onto your project or garment. And I'll stitch down to my mark on the fabric where the opening is supposed to end. And you can either back it up with your machine, two or three stitches, or if you like, you could use the knotting feature on your machine, whichever works for you. And I'm gonna let the machine cut for me. I'm now ready to get my right garment piece. There we go. It did cut. Well, it didn't cut on that one. I'm going to get my right garment piece. And there's my zipper. And I am going to flip it over. We're going to put them right sides together. As always. And so, let me put this in my lap so I can see a little bit better to get everything positioned not twist it. There we go. I got it now. I got so many lights around me I wasn't able to see what I was doing. I think I've got it. Don't want to get those pieces twisted. And then I'm going to use the ditch on the right of the presser foot since we're working on the right of our garment and we've placed our zipper right sides together. We're going to use that right side. Hold your threads when you begin. And we'll attach that side. And that, my dears, is how easy it is to insert an invisible zipper. Stitch all the way down to my mark.
and then I'll back it up to three stitches. Very simple process with this foot. Makes it much easier. Perfect. Alrighty. Sometimes I get it twisted and flipped like I just did. So let me unflip it here. And let's zip it close so you can see how pretty it looks. Make sure I don't get my fabric stuck in there. And there, look how pretty that is. Beautiful invisible zipper. All with the number 35 foot. Now the next thing we have to do is close our seam. And I'm going to change my presser foot from the 35 invisible uh, zipper foot to our basic number four regular zipper foot. And mine is a D foot, so you know what that means. I need to engage my dual feed. And I'm going to move the needle position on the machine as far to the right as it will go. And we're going to be able, by doing that, we are going to make sure I get my feet picked out here correctly. We're going to be able to get close to our zipper. All right, so there's our number four foot. Was a D foot, so I've engaged the dual feet. There's my needle moved all the way to the right. And I am going to take the fabric with the inserted zipper, pull that zipper tail out of my way, bump my press number four zipper foot up against the zipper, and you should be able to see your previous stitching line. I'll take just a few stitches, back them up to lock them, and continue sewing and finishing out the seam. After we've done that, we can trim off the excess zipper tail. Get all these additional threads out of my way. You can just cut it off. I'm not going to cut it with my good gingers. I'll cut it with another pair of scissors that I have. But I would just cut that off, leaving maybe an inch of zipper tail. And because of how we've stitched it in, as soon as our zipper pull reaches the end of our original seam, it will go no further. And we have inserted a wonderful visible zipper. I just love them. I think they look the best. I hope that helps you guys a little bit. And as always, if you have any questions, you know where to find all of us at Gina's. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have anything special you'd like to see, give Brandy a call at the shop and let her know. Thanks so much, guys. You have a good day.